morning. Welcome to worship here at Mountain View. It is good to have you here virtually, if not in person. This might also be a good time for you to uh, invite others in your family or your contact list to join you in worship as we uh, celebrate Christ and the resurrection on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter. Now in a moment, would you join in singing our opening hymn, Christ is alive, let Christians sing. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our hymn of praise is Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Please join us. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, now receive the prayers of all your children and give to all your world your spirit of truth and peace. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, 
He who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, through, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has a fixed day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the
A reading from 1 Peter, and this will be the basis for Pastor Kim's sermon this morning. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, though through, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel this morning comes from John chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be with you and in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This morning the Gospel is also the Gospel of hope in Jesus Christ as found in First Peter, and I believe it breathes a new life and hope into us all. So, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the world, this is a challenging time. For you here at Mountain View, it is also a time of challenge and uh, I would assume some apprehension. But the writer of First Peter gives us all reason to have hope especially when so much seems to be changing, even tanking all around us. Now we're gonna to get to those reasons for hope, but that's the ending. This is the beginning, and uh, we'll start in this way. 
life in the time of coronavirus lately goes something like this. A security guard tells a customer that she cannot enter the store without a face mask. For doing what is right, the guard is shot dead. A store attendant asks a customer to please keep those six feet of distance between other customers and for doing what is only right, he too is shot dead. A park ranger tells a large group of folks gathered on the beach to stop crowding together, to keep proper distance for their own safety's sake. For doing what is right, right in the middle of his speech, the crowd pushes him off a high dock into the water. And again, state leaders in both parties working to follow sound medical advice as they move to open their state safely, find themselves criticized, bullied, threatened by angry citizens armed not only with picket signs, but with assault rifles. Again, for doing what is right, now for the sake of the most vulnerable among us, they say they receive death threats. The lesson from 1 Peter says, now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is right? Who will harm you? Well, painfully, it seems our neighbors will. Those neighbors among us who live and lead from fear. Those who act first, again, from that heart of fear. Those who seem to believe that gun shops are essential business and that gun, gun purchase is the right and wise things to do in a time like this. But clearly, they do not share the same hope we have in Christ Jesus. Remember, 1 Peter says we are to lead with gentleness and reverence. The writer goes on to say, but even if you suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. So do not fear what they fear. Do not be intimidated, but in your hearts, bind your heart to Christ our Lord. But let's be real here. This binding of our hearts to Jesus seems not all that easy. It seems far easier to fear what they fear, especially in these times of suffering, those times when other human beings let us down, those times when the whole world seems set against doing what is right, those times when even the best medical science offers scant hope, at least in the short term, leaving each day simply one more moment to risk and fear. We are learning that in times of radical change, fear grows so, grows so strong that many begin to hoard out of a desperate self-concern. And so you see stories of folks who've grabbed up bundles of toilet paper, bags of flour and sugar and yeast and meat, gallons of hand sanitizer, protective gloves, masks, caseloads of beans, which maybe explains the masks and the paper, toilet paper fears. But again, the words of hope and encouragement for, from First Peter may well get drowned out. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be intimidated. Bind your hearts to Christ as Lord, for it is better to suffer for doing good if suffering should prove to be God's will than to suffer for doing evil. Still, for many, if not most, when we see the innocent suffer, when children and young people and the elderly fall victim, 
when an awful disease strikes down so many who seem truly innocent, when unhinged leadership and unprepared government undo undoes those very things meant to keep all people safe, it proves a challenge to trust each day, to entrust ourselves, our families, into God's good hands. It can become so hard to hold on, e to hold on even to a shred of hope in the face of all this. Fear and the behaviors that grow out of it can prove overwhelming. Now, I started a few moments ago with the latest stories of how so many are responding to this time of crisis, to our shared life in this time of coronavirus. There are all around us so many of these heartbreaking, shameful, even wicked stories based on fear. As people of faith, we are reminded again, we are not to fear their fear. And yet, those are not the only stories for certain. Again and again, in times of suffering especially, people do turn towards God for help. Some are people of faith. Some are just people of good heart. And some simply people of compassion with a willingness to serve. There are many, many of their stories that do move us to hope. One such story tells of more than a hundred priests and nuns in Italy who died from COVID-19 after serving others in their time of illness and in their last moments of life. They believed what First Peter had to say about hope and service. First Peter says, it is better to suffer for doing good, better to engage than retreat. Other stories highlight the thousands of doctors, nurses, EMTs, police, firefighters, custodians, food workers, ambulance drivers, neighbors who put their own life at risk out of duty, out of commitment, out of compassion, out of a love unintimidated by fear. Again, First Peter says, it is better to suffer for doing good, better to serve others than simply self-serve, better to risk than run away. There are among us myriads stories of hope, of those who sing words of hope to their weary neighbors, those who filled the night with clapping as a way to thank and cheer on the first responders among them, neighbors who shop for groceries for those most at risk, friends who support and offer encouragement through the glass window or the glass door, strangers who act as neighbors, even to other strangers. And then there are the untold stories thousands upon thousands of those among us who valiantly try to stay in place, breathe through homemade masks, keep their distance, wash their hands, all not simply for their own well-being, but for the sake, for the very lives of others. There are many stories of hope abounding. So inv I invite you to think to think of the many who are able, willing, and ready to give a good accounting, a good defense of their words and actions that breathe out the gift of hope that is in them. And to remember that they can do it without falling into fear. They do it with gentleness and reverence, not from threat or acts of violence. They do it as good conduct. They do it for neighbor love, believing that we are indeed in this together. Many do it simply as an act of hope and trust, hoping and trusting there will be better days ahead. As Christians, we do it as an act of hope and trust in Jesus Christ and love of neighbor. Now in preparation for preaching this Sunday, I came across these words of Dr. Misimbi, Kanyaro of Kenya, facing in his own country a seeming 
hopelessness, a reality filled with disease, the debt crisis, the corruption, the genocide, the grinding poverty in his own country, he says, Jesus of the gospel is my hope, is our hope. And our mission is about sustaining hope in the midst of everything in the world that seeks to deny our hope or negate it. He goes on to say, to have faith and to hope means to engage hour by hour with life in such a way that our words and our deeds express that which we hope for, while at the same time reminding us we are to be honest and truthful about the reality of our disappointment, our frustrations, our angers, our brokenness, our fear, and our despair, no less. But the challenge, he said, is always to dare to hope and daring to wrestle with all that seeks to deny us our hope. What was it that Peter said? We will not fear what others fear. As people of faith in Jesus Christ, we will hope against hope. We will not be intimidated into the false safety of silence or threat or retreat. So, God's word for us this day perhaps is simply this. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be intimidated, but in your hearts, bind your hearts to Christ as Lord and open your lives in service to one another. Amen. Join us as we sing our hymn of the day. Together, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through, Through him, him all things, things were made. made. For, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin, and the Virgin Mary, Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share the peace of Christ with those who gather with you in worship this day. I invite you to uh, prepare to give your tithes and offerings in service to Christ and Christ's church. To all of you, thank you for your continued and faithful financial support of the mission and ministry of Mountain View Lutheran Church. You know that your tithes and your offerings allow educational opportunities and our worship life to continue, even though we must for a time gather virtually online. Do take some time to consider the various options on your screen, ways that you can respond to God's grace in your life this week. You may also mail in your offerings to the church office at the address that is listed on your screen or in your worship folder. Uh, thank you for your generosity. Merciful God, our, our ordinary, ordinary gifts, gifts seem so small, small for such, such a, celebration, a celebration, but you, but you make, make them of them in abundance, abundance just, just as you do, you do with, with our, lives. our lives. Grant us lives dedicated to the service of others, as the Easter people we are, in the power and wonder of the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the church. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join with the people of God in all times and in all places, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church so that as your followers, we reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our daily living. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, you are the creator of heaven and earth. We pray you revitalize the health of oceans and rivers and lakes and springs and glaciers, Puget Sound and other bodies of water that give life to all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, you call all people of the world your children. We pray you judge every nation justly, that you show mercy to the oppressed, and speak truth through power to power through your prophets. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, you promise to come near to us when we are lost. You promise to hear us in our distress. And so we pray for those who suffer 
in any and every way, especially Marv Johnson, who's been hospitalized with a broken hip. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, your commands are good and merciful. Now give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises that we might indeed work for justice, advocate for the voiceless, free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, you remain with us always, and your kingdom has no end. We remember all the saints who have gone before us, praying this day for Gloria Radcliffe as she mourns the death of her sister Clara. Unite us forever, Lord, in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal love, grace, mercy, and care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will, will be, be done, done on earth as it in is heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Receive these ancient words of God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we head out into the world, our sending hymn is Love Divine, All Love Excelling.
Christ is risen, just as he promised. So go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.